I want to show you how to create scenarios in Tactical. In order to create scenarios, uh, we want to first create a new training. So we click on New. New training goes in the box right here, and we give it a name. I'm going to create a training called Residential Burglary. Now, a training is a scenario or a group of scenarios that are put together into a package. Um, we come down to the scenarios box. You can see that there are none in here right now. We're going to go ahead and click on new to create a new scenario. Um, we're going to call this scenario neighbor hears alarm. And then we'll put in a description. Now, in the scenario category, we're going to select either fire, medical, or police, and we're going to assign a category in here. You can add categories to the li this list. I'm going to call it critical because I would consider this a critical call. Um, the number of rounds is the number of times that you want the trainee to go through this scenario, um, and we leave the default at, at three. You can select two if you'd like. Um, and I'll also leave the scores as the default scores. The first step in creating the scenario step is to add the phone ring step. The phone ring step is a essentially it's the the caller ID information. Uh, the way that I create scenarios in Tactical is I use WordPad, which is found in Programs Accessories, and it's a mini word processing program. And what I do is I type out the scenario that I'm going to create in Tactical uh, line by line. So we have the dispatcher call, we have what the caller is going to say, and then it alternates back and forth from the beginning of the call to the end of the call. To make it a little easier, I'm putting the uh, dispatcher's lines in red and the caller's lines in blue. Um, you can see down here when we ask what is your name and phone number, the person says Bob Jones 5534773. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to put in some caller ID information that would be appropriate for this particular call. And then I'm going to say OK. The next step after the caller ID information comes up is that we have uh, the, the dispatcher respond. So they're going to answer the call. And this we call a voice response step. So I'm going to click on voice response step. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the to my scenario here and I'm going to highlight the first line and copy it. I'm going to go back to this and in the ideal response I'm going to go ahead and paste uh, what I'd like the uh, the the uh, dispatcher trainee to say in response to the phone ringing 911 where is your emergency the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the words in this I'm going to say copy keyword and you can see you'll notice I highlighted this but it only copied down the uh, text without the punctuation because we don't uh, the, the the required words are the words that we're going to consider to be scored words so in this case I want them to say 911 where is your emergency but in some cases I may only want them to say 911 or where or emergency or certain uh, particular keywords while other words would be considered optional now, the next thing I want to do is in our first round, second round, and third round, we want to provide hints as to what the trainee should say. So I'm going to copy the ideal response, and it says in this case, 911, where is your emergency? Now, <clears throat> you may want to create tra training scenarios where each time the trainee loops through there, it gets progressively more difficult. You might give less and less information each time, uh, which is going to cause the trainee to uh, to to memorize or respond naturally what they should say, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, leave the hints the same each of the times through, and then click OK. So we have the dispatcher trainee responding, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to record the the caller step. 
So the caller step, we're going to go back to our scenario. We've asked 911, where is your emergency? And on the caller step, I'm going to go ahead and copy this information right here. I'm going to come back to the, the uh, training scenario wizard, and I'm going to paste that information <coughs> into this text area. Uh, the next thing that we do is we can record this text, or we could actually use the text-to-speech engine to generate this text. I'm going to play for you what this sounds like by clicking the read button. I live at 163 Main Street. The alarm at the residence across the street is ringing. I do not believe that they are home. Okay, so we could click generate and it actually would have generated a sound file and that would have been the sound file. So if you're shy and you don't want to uh, record the audio yourself, you can use the text-to-speech engine. Uh, the speech from the text-to-speech engine is very natural, but it's obviously a machine voice. So the highest fidelity way to do this is to actually record it yourself. I'm going to click record and I'm going to record it as though I was a caller. I live at 163 Main Street. The alarm at the residence across the street is ringing. I do not believe that they are home. And then once I clicked the stop button, uh, it'll come up with a, a dialog that says recording finished. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and click play and listen to how it recorded. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So the next thing we do is we come back with a voice response. So we go back here and we come to the uh, the next red text, which is the, uh, do you have the address where the alarm is ringing? I copy that. I'm going to paste it right here. Once again, I highlight the words. I'm going to copy the keywords down. I'm going to also copy the ideal response. And then the next round hits. And then say OK. Now we're going to continue on through this back and forth, uh, recording uh, and, and typing the uh, or, or copying and pasting the responses that the dispatcher should have. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this out, but I'll skip the video forward so you don't have to watch me repeat these steps over and over again. Okay, now I'm down to the very last step. I've copied the final uh, comment that we expect the trainee to say. I'm coming back over here. I'm pasting it into the ideal response. I'm selecting the text in the box, copying the keywords down. I'm copying the first round hint, the second round hint, the third round hint, saying OK. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK, which will save that step. Now I'm back to the training builder, and what I want to do is I want to add neighbor here's alarm to the residential burglary training that I'm creating, and then I want to click save. Once I click save, I can go ahead and preview the training. Nine one one, where is your emergency? I live at 163 Main Street. The alarm at the residence across the street is ringing. I do not believe that they are home. Do you have the address where the alarm is ringing? 164 Main Street. Do you see anyone or any suspicious activity? No, I don't see anyone or anything. What is your name and phone number? Bob Jones, 5534773. Thank you for the information. We will send a unit shortly. And we're going to go ahead and end this right now, but it would loop through. So you can see that's how we create a scenario and how we put it into a training and how we make it available.